Hello, and welcome to a dramatic reading of Paisley Rabbit and the Treehouse Contest by Steve Richardson and Chris Dunn. I just finished reading this book to my own kids, and the story was great, the different characters and voices was great, and most importantly, the illustrations were fantastic. So I hope you enjoy it. I wanted to record it here for posterity, and if you really like it, the, the video won't do the illustrations justice. You really should pick up the hardcover, uh, support the author, support the illustrator, and, I, and you can then see these, uh, these amazing illustrations in full vivid color with you and your family. All right, but for now, let's enjoy a read through, see how we do, and what happens with Paisley and this treehouse contest. Look at the, even the even the book cover the in the in, uh, inside of the book whatever that's called really nice a lot of care went into the production of this book there's a lovely dedication here I'll save for when you purchase the book yourself but uh, the author effectively says uh, Steve Richardson says that his own brother um, had uh, needed a kidney transplant and that one of the characters Davy in the story is based on him. And he encourages uh, folks to donate to the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org. All right, let us begin. Unfortunately, summer vacation was over. During morning recess, Paisley Rabbit and her friends gathered in their usual favorite place. Paisley listened to them boast about their summer vacations and upcoming adventures when Jimmy Squirrel puffed up his tail. Guess what? My dad and I are going to build the best treehouse this fall. My dad owns the largest construction company in the state, so it's going to be the biggest, best treehouse in the whole world. Several of Paisley's other friends chimed in one after another. Oh, my dad can build a better treehouse than yours can, said Arnold Otter. My dad will build one with extra rooms and a deck, boasted Thomas Fox. Well, my dad will build one so high in a tree it will need an elevator, replied Simon Shrew. I gotta assume that's Simon the Shrew there. My treehouse will still be better, bragged Jimmy. My treehouse is going to have real furniture. Paisley Rabbit stood silently watching and wiggling her cottontail. Why don't we have a treehouse contest? We can build a treehouse and vote on whose is the best. All the friends jumped and fluttered and swished their tails with excitement. Remember, these are all different animals. That's a great idea, they cheered. "'Shouldn't there be rules?' asked Paisley's best friend, Molly Ringtail. "'That must be her over there.' Paisley's ears perked up. She usually had a pencil behind one ear and a little notebook in her handbag. There she is. She took them out and proposed three rules. Rule one, everyone has until Thanksgiving to finish. Rule two, you can use your dad or anyone else to help you build it. Rule three, we will all meet on the first Saturday after Thanksgiving to vote on the treehouses. The treehouse with the most votes is the winner. Everyone agreed to the rules, even Jimmy. Jimmy Squirrel gave Paisley a strange look. Paisley, how are you going to build a treehouse? He asked. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> he said, Paisley, are you going to build a treehouse? He asked. Of course, she replied. Jimmy started to laugh. <laughs> How? You don't have a dad around to help. We're talking about real construction here. You don't have a chance by yourself. I'll figure something out, said Paisley. You worry about your own treehouse, Jimmy. And I agree. All right. After school, most of the kids went home and started gathering boards and materials for their treehouses. But not Paisley. Once she reached the entrance to her hole and hopped down the main tunnel, the first place she went was to her little brother Davy's room. Sadly, Davy was sick and needed a new kidney. See, that's where the author's brother kind of comes in there, and that very good cause. He would soon need to go to the hospital if Paisley's mom could raise enough money for his care. Guess what, Davy? said Paisley. I have a big surprise project. I'll tell you about it at supper after I do my research. Davy sat tall in his bed. His ears perked straight up. Oh boy, Paisley, I can't wait to hear all about it. Their mom came into Davy's room and gave Paisley a hug. Hello, Paisley. I see that you're home from school. Did I hear something about a surprise project? Yup, Paisley hopped around in excitement. But I don't want to say much about it until I figure out my master plan. 
Mom smiled. That's my Paisley, always thinking big. I can't wait to hear all about the project and your plan. Paisley went to her favorite place, the library, and spent the whole afternoon doing research. She looked up all kinds of things that would help her build the best treehouse that she could and took notes until finally her master plan was ready. Paisley jumped out of her chair and hopped around the library with glee. Then she bounded through the countryside to tell Davy and her mom all about it at dinner. Aren't these beautiful illustrations? Two weeks into the contest, everyone was working hard to build their tree houses. Everyone except Paisley. One afternoon, she and the other kids went to Jimmy's house to see how his tree house was coming along. They all knew he would be hard to beat. Jimmy was handing up boards to his dad to hammer into place. Hey, everyone, said Jimmy proudly. Come and see how a real tree house is built. Jimmy showed everyone a picture that his dad had drawn, that's called a plan, like an architectural plan, exhibiting what his treehouse, his finished treehouse would look like. Everyone oohed and awed. Timmy Skunk started to chew on his claws. Well, oh, I'll never make a house as good as that, he said, shaking his head. Arnold, what's all that noise at your house? asked Molly Ringtail. Arnold Otter lived next door to Jimmy. Everyone could hear yelling and loud banging coming from his backyard. Well, that's my dad and my brothers working on my treehouse, said Arnold. Come and see. Just as everyone reached Arnold's yard, they heard a loud yell and a tremendous pop, bang, crash. There was Mr. Otter sitting in a mud pile under a tree with broken branches and boards all around him. Dad, what happened? That big branch broke, said Mr. Otter. Luckily, this nice soft mud puddle was here. Jimmy laughed. <laughs> to think I was worried about your treehouse, Arnold. This contest is going to be a breeze. Mr. Otter bristled with anger. Never mind, Arnold. We'll just move the treehouse to a tree with stronger branches. Jimmy went back to his yard, still laughing, and everyone else went home. Paisley went straight to tell Davy all about Jimmy's treehouse plan. Wow, Paisley, Jimmy's treehouse sounds amazing, said Davy. Are you sure you can beat him? You haven't even started on yours. Don't worry, Davy. I have something really, really big planned. You'll see. She pulled up Davy's covers to tuck him into bed. I wish you didn't have to go to the hospital tomorrow. I could sure use your help. By mid-September, Paisley had still not picked up a board or a hammer or even selected a tree for her treehouse. She was busy putting all the pieces together for her master treehouse plan and making sure that everyone involved kept it top secret. So there's a little lesson here. Sometimes if you make a good plan, you can actually save yourself a lot of effort and make things go really efficiently and do something really big. And it sounds like that's what Paisley's trying to do here. She's got a big plan, and that plan allows her to get other people involved in it. So she made some phone calls to... The town mayor, oh yes, I'd love to be involved. The local newspaper, sounds like a good story. The architect, I'll see if I can help. And investors, hmm, it sounds like a good plan. With Paisley's secret plan starting to fall into place, she was ready to hire an architect to design her treehouse. The only thing she knew was that the architect, the architect had to think big. Paisley asked her mom to take her into the city to its tallest skyscraper to see Mr. Badger, the architect. When she arrived, Mr. Badger shook Paisley's paw. Welcome, Paisley. I've been looking forward to showing you my ideas for your treehouse. I hope that there's at least one plan here that you will like. He pointed to a big stack of drawings on his drafting table. Paisley hopped over to the table to look at the drawings. Mr. Badger frowned as he watched Paisley reject one plan after another until she came to the last one. Paisley carefully looked it over and then hopped around the room, clapping her paws in delight. This is the one that I want, Mr. Badger. It's like the treehouse that I saw in my imagination. A big smile came across Mr. Badger's face. That's my favorite, too. I know an excellent builder and an interior decorator to help me and both have promised me that they will keep your treehouse a secret until the contest is over. The builder, Mr. Beaver, can start right after Halloween. Paisley was thrilled, and she shook Mr. Badger's paw. 
Thank you for working so hard, Mr. Badger. You did a wonderful job. Paisley left Mr. Badger's office, and her mother took her to the hospital to tell Davy all about Mr. Badger and his treehouse designs. There's a picture of the treehouse, and it looks like they've got a plan they're willing to go with. It's amazing that she got a badger involved to help design the, the, the treehouse, and they're going to get Mr. Beaver to build everything. Wow, this could be some treehouse. Let's see what happens now. On Halloween, Paisley and her mother were getting ready to visit Davy in the hospital when they heard the doorbell. Ding dong. Paisley opened the door holding a cauldron full of candy. Trick or treat, yelled Jimmy Squirrel, Arnold Otter, and Molly Ringtail. As they all took some candy, Molly asked, Paisley, where is your tree house? Jimmy just made, oh, <laughs> Jimmy just made us look all over your backyard and we didn't see it. Are you going to be able to finish in time? Paisley smiled knowingly. It's still in the planning stages. Jimmy burst into laughter. <laughs> There's no planning when you build a treehouse. You just do it. You should drop out now, Paisley. You don't have a chance. My treehouse is almost finished. And guess what? He puffed up his tail. The city newspaper is coming to take pictures and write an article about me and my awesome treehouse. Ha! <laughs> Molly rolled her eyes and grabbed Jimmy's arms. Stop bragging, Jimmy. Let's go. See you, Paisley said Arnold, grabbing Jimmy's other arm. As they marched him away, he was still laughing with satisfaction. <laughs> Let's hope she can show Jimmy. The next day, everyone in the treehouse contest went to Jimmy's house to see what all the newspaper attention was about. A reporter with a camera, a pencil, and notepad interviewed Jimmy and his dad. Then Jimmy posed for pictures, standing in front of his treehouse, pretending he was working on it. Pretending he was working on it, because he really wasn't. It's his dad. Jimmy was all dressed up and looked like he had spent hours shampooing and fluffing his tail for the camera. After the reporter left, Jimmy's dad went back to work on the treehouse. Jimmy swaggered over to the other kids. Pretty cool, don't you think? There was silence for several seconds. Then Timmy Cub, a skunk, stepped forward and shook Jimmy's hand. Good job, Jimmy. I give up. My treehouse is never going to be this cool. Well, I give up too, said Nelson Hoot Owl. That only left Jimmy, Paisley, Arnold, Tommy, and Simon in the contest. Those are all various animals. Don't worry. You don't need to keep track of them. They'll show you later. Jimmy, uh, excuse me. Jimmy looked at Paisley. You should give up too, Paisley. You haven't even started your treehouse. You sure are stubborn or clueless. I don't know which. Paisley looked up at Jimmy's treehouse. Nice treehouse, Jimmy. Molly rolled her eyes. Good thing your dad is almost, has done almost all the work. Paisley looked back, noticing several large lumber trucks driving by. So long, everyone. I have to go meet someone, she said, hopping away. Paisley hopped through the countryside a couple of miles from town where the old growth forest still grew and a pristine river meandered through the lovely woods. She was exactly on time. There was Mr. Badger, the architect, and his friend, Mr. Beaver, the builder. They were waiting beside several huge trucks full of lumber and a giant crane for lifting wood and materials high into the air. Next to the meandering river was a most majestic tree where the treehouse would be built. It was big, old. It was a big old oak tree that, with massive branches, rose 120 feet above the ground and spread out a good 75 feet. That's a huge tree. Workers were everywhere, some on the ground looking at plans, some high in the tree taking measurements. You can see some here. Excuse me. Sorry. Paisley bounded towards them full of nerves. Hello, Mr. Badger and Mr. Beaver. I just came from Jimmy's house, and a reporter was there taking pictures of his treehouse. Should I be worried? She asked earnestly. Mr. Badger and Mr. Beaver and several of the workers burst into laughter. Worried about that little matchbox? Ha! said Mr. Beaver. I've been rivals with Jimmy's dad for years and in the construction business. It will be sweet to beat him, and in spectacular fashion, I might add. Paisley smiled. I just wanted to be sure. She looked up into the tree and tried to imagine how her treehouse would look way up there. Mr. Beaver turned and slapped his tails on a stack of boards. Back to work, everyone. Let's show Miss Paisley what we can do. 
for the next two weeks, every day after school, Paisley went to see how her treehouse was coming along. She almost always brought lots of homemade lemonade for the thirsty workers and told them what a good job they were doing. So notice the difference in Paisley's attitude here with the people helping her build her treehouse. Jimmy just kind of takes his dad's efforts for granted and wants to just show it all off to his friends, but Paisley really seems to be appreciating all the people coming together and helping her make her imaginary treehouse into a reality. And I think people want to help you when you show them that much that you appreciate it. As Thanksgiving approached, construction on the house was nearly done. Look at this staircase. You can tell this is going to be more than just your ordinary treehouse. That's for sure. It was good the construction was nearly done because judging was coming up quickly. One day when Paisley arrived at the construction site, the interior designer was waiting to meet her. Her name was Tallulah Flamingo, a very flamboyant bird who wore the most colorful hats Paisley had ever seen. They met at the treehouse for two days, walking from room to room as Tallulah took measurements and talked Paisley through selecting paint colors, wallpaper, furniture, knickknacks, and all the toys that would be there. And that's what an interior designer does. The architect designs the building, the builder builds it to the walls, the floors, the stairs and things. And the interior designer is someone you can hire to give you guidance and expertise on choosing those types of things. And since this is a very special treehouse, at least it sounds like it, it makes sense that there's an interior designer. This was Paisley's favorite part of making the treehouse. The strawberry colored wallpaper will be lovely in the main kitchen, said Tallulah as they walked down the stairs together. A week before Thanksgiving, and right on Paisley's schedule, Mr. Beaver and his crew finished building Paisley's treehouse. Now it was time for Tallulah to get to work. She had only six days to decorate. Luckily, Tallulah and Paisley already agreed on all the decorating decisions. The next day, Paisley and her friends went to Jimmy's house just in time to see a furniture van pull up. The furniture crew delivered a couch, some chairs, a couple of small tables, framed paintings, and even a TV set for Jimmy's treehouse. Hey, everyone, said Jimmy. Check out that TV and that couch. Pretty cool. Paisley hopped out of the way of the Wolverine and Kotamundi carrying the TV. That's this animal here. Nice TV, Jimmy, she said. Arnold Otter looked over Jimmy's treehouse and then started scratching his head. Hey, everyone, did you hear about the big treehouse that they're building just outside of town? He said. It's supposed to be huge, but the city won't say anything about it until it's finished. No one even knows where it is. I heard about that treehouse, said Jimmy. I'm sure it was my treehouse being in the newspaper that gave him the idea. Paisley smiled. Her secret was still safe. She said goodbye so that she could get to her treehouse. As she hopped through the forest, she noticed that all the leaves were golden. Even the tree that her treehouse was in was bright yellow. Paisley had come to watch some of the furniture being delivered. Unlike the small van at Jimmy's, there were several huge trucks at her house with eight wolverines, two Kotamundi, and four woodchucks unloading all kinds of furniture, toys, pictures, knickknacks, and more. She went up to one of the middle floors and looked down to see a huge piano being hoisted up a rope to the living room. Truly, Paisley's treehouse is going to be something grand, indeed, on another scale altogether, it seems. All right, so finally, it was time to judge the treehouses. Paisley put on her best outfit for the judging because she really had a big surprise for all of her friends. Everyone met at Tommy Fox's house first, looked at most of the treehouses, and ended up at Jimmy's house. When everyone was finished admiring Jimmy's TV, couch, and refrigerator, they went out onto the deck. So these are, this is Arnold Otter's, Simon Shrew's treehouse, not as nice. And now they stopped at Jimmy Squirrel's deluxe treehouse that his dad mostly built. So Jimmy puffed up his tail while they're all out there on his deck. Do we really even need to bother seeing tree, Paisley's treehouse? Everybody knows that I won. Paisley couldn't have finished anything very good if she started after Halloween. 
and she can't build a treehouse because she's a girl with no dad. Oh, Jimmy, how little you know. Looking irritated, Tommy Fox spoke up. Why don't you just be quiet, Jimmy? Paisley deserves a chance and chance to be judged just like the rest of us. That's right, said Nelson Hoot Owl. We've heard enough from you, Jimmy. Besides, your dad did almost all the work on your treehouse. Jimmy rolled his eyes. But I looked around Paisley's hole and the hill she lives under yesterday, and there's no treehouse there, so I win, said Jimmy victoriously. Paisley stepped forward. My treehouse isn't near my hole, said Paisley. If you want to see it, follow me. Here we go. Everyone headed to see Paisley's treehouse, but with low expectations, knowing that she got started so late. But remember, if you have a lot of help from your friends and from grown-ups, things can go fast. They reached the edge of town where a path led into the deep woods, bursting in fall colors. Eventually, they reached a small dirt road that all the trucks used to deliver material to Paisley's treehouse. They followed the road about a mile into the country and then into several hills where the trees were very old and many were simply gigantic. Off in the distance, they could hear a band playing and a lot of noise. It got louder and louder with each step. They rounded a bend, the forest opened up, and there before them was a majestic tree with a towering, fantastic, beautiful treehouse in it. On the ground was a huge crowd of animals. There were food booths, a band playing, and even the city's mayor on a huge stage with banners and a microphone. Reporters were everywhere with TV cameras taking video and, and pictures of everything. Wow, screamed all the kids in the contest. Jimmy's fluffy tail went limp and his eyes narrowed. Gee, this treehouse is way cooler than mine, he said. Then he turned to Paisley and puffed up his tail. But this isn't your treehouse, Paisley. You cheated. This is the city's treehouse. At that moment, Mayor Wood Toad saw Paisley and waved at her. She waved back. He stepped up to a microphone and called out, Everyone, please, take a look at who has arrived. It's the awesome attacular rabbit responsible for creating this wonderful treehouse. The crowd began to cheer. The band began to play. And fireworks shot into the air. Then everyone, even Jimmy, reluctantly declared Paisley the winner. They picked Paisley up on their shoulder and carried her to the stage. And you know why those kids probably felt so much more willing to support Paisley is she wasn't bragging about it, right? She was very humble and she just stuck to her plan. The mayor was holding a pair of scissors for Paisley to cut a ribbon, which is something ceremonially people do when there's a big official building opening for a community like this town. He handed them to her and she cut the ribbon. Everyone cheered. Then she turned around to pose with the mayor for pictures and for the TV cameras. She was jumping up and down so much that the cameramen were having a hard time getting her to focus, getting her in focus for their cameras. Jimmy pulled the local newspaper out of his pocket that had his photo on it. He looked at the tiny photo in the back of the paper and then at the crowd all around Paisley. Hey, Paisley, how did you do all this? I don't get it, he said, looking somber. I guess I owe you an apology. You really beat me good. Paisley smiled. I did a lot of research at the library. There's a tip. And then I wrote up a proposal for the city for a treehouse city park. We raised money from regular folks and business animals who wanted to be part of this amazing project. What a, what a smart young lady. Now the city has the coolest treehouse in the whole world, and my brother, along with all the other sick kids in town, will get their care paid for with $2 from every ticket sold. That's smart, Paisley. Paisley saw the mayor was beckoning to her. Excuse me, Jimmy, but I have work to do. Paisley took the elevator, yes, this house has an elevator, all the way up to the third floor and walked out on a deck. Everyone was down below waiting for her to speak. Welcome to our new city park, everyone. With a ticket, kids are now allowed to come in and play. The crowd roared. And then a huge line formed with those eager to see and play in the new treehouse. 
at the front of the line were all of Paisley's friends who would get a personal tour before anyone else could come in. And would you like to see what this treehouse looked like? Ta-da! Look at that. So this is why I told you you want to definitely get the hardcover book so you can really enjoy this and show this with your kids up in detail. But look at that. That's unlike any treehouse you've probably ever seen. I know I haven't. Amazing, amazing. So here's the bottom of it. You see that there's a river going by. There's a laundry room. There's some laundry here. This is a kitchen, a little pantry storeroom. This looks like a downstairs kitchen area, a little living room area. There's a rabbit reading the newspaper, a downstairs bathroom, a couple of bedrooms. Might be for guests coming to stay. And then here's the living room. And it looks like it's all set for the coming holidays. Oh, little dinosaur skeleton. Did you spot that? You'll find if you read this book, there's always something new to spot in the scenery. Really well done. Here's the middle of the treehouse. Look at all these rooms. This is an upstairs living room, a deck, a kid's reading room. This looks like it might be sort of a food and arts and crafts baking area. A giant ball pit. How awesome is that? A, a younger kid's nursery. A little diner area with an exit chute here that goes to the ball pit. And an elegant dining area here. Maybe that's where the piano is. Oh, no, I think the piano is actually down in the first floor. But just, again, amazing imagination designs here. Let's explore the top of this treehouse. So if you see here, there's a movie theater in the, in the roof. Little walkways, little places to spy out. Looks like bedroom here, bedroom here. So three bedroom, little house, and a little secret library which we'll hear about in a moment. The next day, after the grand celebration, Paisley sat at her desk to personally thank every single animal who had helped her, even in the smallest way, with her treehouse. And for those of you listening, that's a very nice thing to do. For people who come to your parties or come to your special events, it's really nice, or, or who help you out, everyone appreciates a thank you gift, or I mean a thank you letter at least. In a typical Paisley Rabbit fashion, every single card was written from the bottom of Paisley's heart and each line written with love and care. What a great example. When she was done, there were hundreds of thank you cards written, sealed, and ready to be mailed. Now, that took some work for Paisley to do, but do you think she felt good about doing that work? Absolutely. Sometimes that's, there's work that you do when you know it'll make other people happy and appreciated. It makes you feel good doing that work. Several days later, cold winds began to whisk the falling leaves around. The weather was changing with winter quickly approaching. Paisley's brother Davy was still in the hospital, so Paisley and her mother loaded up the car as they prepared for a new life. They were moving into the treehouse because the mayor had asked them to be the main treehouse caretakers, which they gladly accepted. We just took a tour of this treehouse. It's a, a bigger than most people's, than almost anybody's home, so it requires a lot of care, especially if the public's going to be coming in and out and using things. got to be taken care of. So it makes sense. When they arrived at the treehouse, they hopped out of the car and began unloading boxes. Paisley and her mother paused and took a deep breath, looking at their new home. Strangely enough, their rooms were near the top of the treehouse. A big change from living underground... But for Paisley, it was very exciting. Can you imagine pulling up and saying, we're going to live in this grand place? Four weeks passed, and it was Christmas Eve. It was snowing outside, and Paisley, her family, and her close friends gathered at the treehouse for a surprise Christmas party for Davy, who was coming home from the hospital. Paisley's aunt was in the dining room, setting out a Christmas dinner of cooked carrots and beets, baked potatoes, dressing, several pies, and green bean casserole. Bit of a vegetarian fare. I guess kind of makes sense given the cast. The hot food made the house smell wonderful. The treehouse was decorated for Christmas, and Christmas music was playing throughout the house. In the living room and entry, Paisley's friends and family put presents under the two Christmas trees. Even Jimmy Squirrel came and brought presents for everyone in the contest. Nice, Jimmy. The grown-ups were drinking eggnog and hot apple cider, while the kids played all over the treehouse. Paisley kept a lookout through the living room window, watching for her mother and Davy. Then, off in the distance, walking through the falling snow near the river, Paisley saw them coming. 
She told everyone to run downstairs to the grand entry to hide. With great anticipation, they waited in the foyer of the main, for the main door to open. Many chose to hide behind the huge Christmas tree. They heard the door handle being turned. Then the door began to open. There was little Davy holding his mother's hand. Everyone jumped up and screamed, Surprise! Davy's eyes widened and his mouth dropped. For the f This was the first time he had ever seen Paisley's treehouse. Davy stood there in awe for a few seconds as he looked around what must have seemed like a king's palace. Paisley then approached him with a present in her hands. Welcome to your new home, Davy. Merry Christmas, she said. That must have been a very sweet moment. Finally, the Christmas party was over, and everyone but Paisley's family went home. While Paisley's mom was tucking Davy into bed, Paisley who was in her new room, went through a secret door that led through the middle of a big branch where she climbed up to the tip-top of the treehouse. There was a very special room that the other kids in the public had not seen, a room just for Paisley. It was, you guessed it, a beautiful library with thousands of books. Remember, Paisley loves the library. Paisley sat down on a cushion and looked out at the snow on the branches just outside the window. She remembered what a special day it had been and what a wonderful experience she had building her great treehouse. She remembered everyone who had believed in her and helped her to make this vision come true. When she wrote another, then she wrote another thank you card to the doctors who had operated on Davy to make him well. Paisley's treehouse had already raised enough money to pay for Davy's operation, which her mother could not afford on her own. Eventually, it would help thousands of other children. And so while we don't have tree houses like this to help, it's just a reminder that through good works and charity, we can help other children in need who need medical care. Here's the last page. Paisley wrote one last thank you card. She took it downstairs to the living room where she left it beside the Christmas tree with some milk and cookies. Then off she went to bed. Slowly, the hands on the clock moved until it was exactly midnight. It was now Christmas Day. Paisley and Davy were asleep in their treehouse rooms when, every, when someone very jolly found Paisley's thank you note waiting just for him. Must be Santa Polar Bear. The end. There you have it, folks. And there's one last picture of that awesome, enormous treehouse the bottom, the middle, the top. And once again, I hope you enjoyed it. And I encourage you to support the author and the illustrator by buying the hardcover book so you can enjoy it with your kids as I did with mine. Thanks for reading with me.